Now we're going to go indoors where I can show you some things on a chalkboard and diagram some situations to show you how an appeal play can affect whether or not runs score. It's a very complicated process so we're going to need to do some chalkboard work. So let's go inside. Now we're going to talk about when the umpire indicates to the scorekeeper when a run scores or not, when a third out is made to end the inning. A run is scored when anybody touches first, second, third, and home. But there are some exceptions. No run can be scored if the third out is made on a play where the batter is put out before he reaches first base or if a result of a play is a force out. There's some confusion about what force outs are and we're going to go through all these plays right now and some examples of when you would score a run and when you wouldn't. All right, there's four types of plays. There's a timing play, force play, the batter out before he reaches first, and appeal plays that can make the last out. A timing play is simply if the run, runner touched the plate before the third out was made and the out was not a force. In that case, the run scores. If the third out is made before he touches the plate, then obviously he can't score. Okay. A force play, it doesn't matter what time he touches the plate. If the third out is a force out, that run does not count. The time that he touched the plate is, is irrelevant. If the batter is out before he reaches first base or touches first base, no runs can score. And it doesn't matter when that happens. He could be out on an appeal play or he could be out on a regular play. Run, two runs could score before he is put out. But if he's out before he reaches first, those runs are not going to count. An appeal play could result in a run not scoring. And we're going to deal with the rules that are involved with that. An appeal play could be a force out, in which case if it's a force out when the appeal is made, then no runs would score. We're going to give you some examples here to try to cover all of this because it can get very confusing. In this first example, it's going to be a real simple case of a timing play where the run scores either before or after the actual out is made. So if we look at the board here, we have runners on first and third, and we have two outs. And this runner is attempting to steal second base. The catcher throws down, and as he throws down, this guy tries to score. Now, this is a timing play, because there's no force out involved. So it's simply a case of if this runner touches home plate before this runner is tagged out, then the run would count. If the runner is tagged out before this runner touches the plate, then his run doesn't count. Very simple example of a timing play. Which happened first, the out or the score? Now we're going to have an example where there's two outs and the batter hits the ball and he's a pretty slow runner and the runner on third gets a good jump and he touches the plate before the batter is put out. But that is not going to score a run because no run can score if the batter is put out before he reaches first. Now, a lot of people think that's a force play, and it's technically not. It's similar to a force play, but it's simply if the batter is put out before he reaches first base, no runs can score. So if this guy hits a ground ball, he starts running, this guy comes in, crosses the plate, then the throw comes, they get him out. Even though he scored before the out, this run would not score because no run can score if the third out is a result of the batter being put out before he reaches first base. Now we're going to give an example where the run doesn't score because the third out was a result of a force play. In this situation we have two outs, runners on first and third, and the play is going to be that this runner gets a good jump and takes off as the batter hits the ball, ground ball to the shortstop, throws to second base. This runner touches home plate before this force out at second. Even though he touched the plate before this out, in this case it's not a timing play, this runner was forced to advance. If the third out is the result of a force play, no run can score. So in this play, this run does not count. Now that we've established that the third out can be the result of either a timing play, a force play, or the batter out before he reaches first, we get into the complicated situations 
well, there could be an appeal play, and the result of that appeal could be any one of those three things. And you have to decide which one it is before you can decide if the run scores or not. So we're going to have an example here of an appeal play that is also a timing play. And the runner is on second and third base with two outs. And in this situation, the batter gets a hit, so he reaches first. And on the play, the runner from third scores. The runner from second comes around third, and he fails to touch third. So that's an appealable situation. Comes in and scores. Now the defense appeals that this runner failed to touch third. That makes the third out. Well, the appeal was made as a timing play because he was not forced to that base. So at the time of the out, the appeal, one run had already scored. So you would score the runner from third, but not the other runner, and the inning would end. Now in this example, it's the same situation as the last play. We have runners on second and third with two outs, and the batter gets a hit. And on the hit, both runners come around and score. Only this time, it's the lead runner from third who fails to touch home. This runner does touch third and touches home. Now the defense appeals that he failed to touch home. That's the third out, and it's a timing play. And although the timing of the appeal was after the runner from second scored, there's an exception to the rule, rule 7.12, which says that if the third out is made as a result of an appeal, no following runner can score. So the runner from second, even though he scored at a time after the appeal was made, there's a special rule that says he does not score. In this situation, we're going to have a third out appeal, which also results in a force out. And if the third out is a force out, no runs can score, even though it was an appeal play. So we have bases loaded with two outs. And the batter hits a double. But the runner from first fails to touch second. So he hits the ball, the runner from third scores, the runner from second comes around and scores, the runner from first fails to touch second base as he goes to third. And the batter winds up here. So at the end of the play, we have runners at second and third. Now the defense appeals that this runner failed to touch second base. Well, he was forced to second base. So that out on appeal is a force out appeal. So these two runs would not count. Now in this example, we have an appeal play that's a result of the batter being put out on appeal before he touches first base. So no runs can score. This is a wonderful play here. The bases are loaded with two outs. And Slugger here hits a home run over the fence. This run comes in. This run comes in. This run comes in. But he, in his excitement, fails to touch first base. Everybody's congratulating each other over here. And the defense appeals. Then he missed first base. That means he was out before he touched first base, and no run can score if the third out is made before the batter reaches first base. So none of these runs would score, and the inning is over. Now we're going to deal with the situation where there's runners on first and third with only one out. And there's a lot of confusion on this play. People think that it's a force out, in which case runs would not count. This is not a force out play. I'll cover it here for you. This runner's on first and third with one out. The batter hits a fly ball. So this runner gets ready to tag up. This runner goes part way. Now the ball is caught for the second out. This runner legally retouches, comes in, and scores. Now the throw from the outfield goes back over to first, and it reaches first base before this runner gets there. Now that's a continuous action appeal. And if if he's called out, that's not a force out, it's an appeal out. And if that out occurs after this runner touches the plate, the run would score. If that out occurs before he touches the plate, it would not score. It's a timing play, not a force play. This is a continuous action appeal. 
All right, that covers all the situations. Let's head back out to the field.